Okay, gentlemen, we started with this one. And within a couple of minutes, we ended up here. What's up guys, I'm Alex at generalgeibel.com. Today I want to talk about raw style kicks. This tutorial should help you to make your piece of shit crappy self-made kick to a less piece of shit but also less self-made kick. In this tutorial we are gonna use samples from sample packs or you can also apply those techniques with your own samples or with others, whatever. If you're very anal about your kicks, probably this is not a tutorial for you. If you just want to have a kick which has kind of your character and has kind of your feel but but still sounds kind of good, this might be helpful. And if you just want to learn some new shit, this might be helpful as well. Before we get started, I would like to ask you to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button, like, comment, do all that cool shit, cause that helps the engagement, that helps the algorithm, people see more of my videos, and that kind of keeps me motivating doing shit like that anyway. So if any one of my videos ever in your life was helpful, uh, definitely make sure you leave a thumbs up, maybe then it will be shown to somebody else and it will be helpful for him as well. Anyway, let's talk about the kicks. When I receive demos, the main problem which most of the producers got is they nail the character, the kick sounds how it's supposed to sound, it sounds Sounds interesting, but technically it sounds pretty crappy. It doesn't have a punch, it doesn't have a bass, it doesn't have anything. While the sound is kind of right, and I mean like the creative sound, oftentimes they struggle with the technical part. There are many techniques and YouTube is full of them. Uh, you find a lot of stuff like that on my channel, you find a lot of stuff on other channels, but this one should really help you just to get a kick going and be able to make music. Let's go into Ableton. All right, now we are in Ableton and Let's go through the process. So usually, you know, you watched a lot of tutorials, you learned a lot of things and you say, okay, you're good to go, you can make a kick. So you start with a clean kick like that. You add an EQ. You add some distortion. You add another EQ. You add more distortion. Then you decide you're gonna go really wild and you even add a reverb. And you think, wow, I'm, I'm amazing, I'm really good, I'm almost there. So you add maybe another EQ and some more distortion. And all of a sudden you got your kick and you say like, wow, that's the most amazing kick. So let me call Radical Redemption, tell him his days are over, now you're about to come. At some point you kind of get real and you start using your ears and you realize, well, it might be interesting, it's still not really good. It's lacking punch, it's lacking everything. It's, it's a nice character, but it's lacking everything else. Now you can render it out. So basically this is the kick which I just shown, this channel. And now I kind of bounce it out. Here it is. From here you can go two ways. You know, if you're more advanced, you can go the pro way, you know, start uh, creating more layers, start like doing some multi-band uh, processing stuff, you know, EQs and even more stuff. So like really go crazy and really kill yourself. But you're a beginner and you basically just want to have a kick and you want to feel like you've done something. So you maybe you read a lot of idiots on the internet and you think like, oh, I kick from a sample pack is not good. Uh, however, I'm gonna steal like half of a pop song, but I'm not gonna use a kick from a sample pack. It's all fine. Here you got like your character, but you kind of want to sound it good after you got real and kind of started hearing things differently. In this case, you got also a lot of different possibilities. You know, you could take layers which you made already and layer them up. Obviously, this kick is uh, lacking quite a lot of bass. And also kind of warmth a little bit. The talk is kind of also lacking really punch and lacking transient. It's 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 uh, just, just not a good punch. It has a character, but it's lacking everything else. Then you can start the layering process. Like I already said, you can use your own samples. You can use sample packs. Uh, I got like a couple of sample packs out there, which even got like a dedicated tail and talk sounds. So we basically gonna use them. Let's maybe first take care of the talk. You can browse around and see what fits, even play around and just to toss them in and see how it goes. 
It's getting interesting when you use uh, talks from different keys, even though those to talks don't really have a key. It's just the nature of them. You know, you just use random talks and you move them around and tweak them a bit. So yeah, we can take this one. This one sounds pretty damn fucking massive. First, let's hear it. Sounds a little bit off. Let's pitch it up a little bit. A little bit. Okay, here on plus three, it sounds pretty interesting. You can still, you know, play around. You can shorten the talk up. So whatever you feel for. Then we want to do something about the tail because it doesn't really sound too nice. So we browse a little bit. This uh, initial kick is on G, as you can see. This one sounds interesting. So let's drop it here. And then we're gonna just move it around until we find a point where we kind of like it. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. So now in this case, we went from this. Already kind of interesting. You know, we could still play around with the levels. We could do more processing. I want to keep this uh, tutorial brief, but uh, it doesn't mean like this is the only way to do. You know, you could still go into this layer. You could make it super stereo instead. So uh, there, there are no limits to play around. You know, at the end of the day, if you use samples like that, mixing up with your own character sample, uh, at the end, your taste is gonna determine your kick. So even if you use like, you know, sounds for layering, which others made, uh, you got a distinct taste and you will come up with a distinct kick. So it's not like, once once you keep adding layers and you keep adding something on, it's not like, you know, everybody else will have that too. So don't worry about that. Uh, let's hear the full thing. <laughs> Uh, it sounds already kind of interesting, you know, we could go in and maybe, you know, uh, create here with a fade, a little bit of movement and stuff like that. Just, just playing around, having fun. We can take this talk or another one, it really doesn't matter, and we can even reverse it to get more like this kind of sucking effect. So we make the level a little bit lower and we blend it in. Sometimes it's interesting to flip the face on one side so basically you lose it completely in mono but in stereo it gives a nice feel. So let's check it out. Just, you know, additional stuff. We could even move around the reverb here a little bit. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, this is kind of a very lazy way. Uh, usually, you know, you would take care of levels a little bit more, take care of frequencies and EQs. Usually you would also split uh, the attack and tail up, but at the end of the day, if it works, if it sounds all right, just go with it, you know, don't, don't, don't make yourself crazy. Then we can do some final processing, you know, we can uh, load up an EQ and, you know, maybe add a little bit more of mids because it's still pretty empty over there. Could add a little bit of high end. And then we just gonna squash that thing to shit. So you, you see a lot of different opinions on that, you know. Some people say you want to leave room, you want to leave dynamics for like the mix down, for the mastering. I think make it just ready. Like really make it in a way that you just toss it in your project and you don't touch it anymore. It sounds awesome. And in terms of mastering, at the end of the day, it will be the loudest thing in your track anyway. And definitely that thing that eats up the most bandwidth. So don't worry about it. Just squash it to shit. Like you could also say it's kind of mastering on the kick only. But it's not really mastering because we just squash it to shit. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, just with a regular trash, clip control. You can use anything you want. Um, any type of clipper, everything works. <laughs> So yeah, this is kind of the very easy way 
Uh, let's uh, bounce it out, then you can also see how it looks like. Okay, gentlemen, we started with this one. And within a couple of minutes, we ended up here. It still kind of has a little bit character left, not too much. You know, take a little bit more care of uh, making your own character a little bit better. You can retain a little bit more of that. Here the own character was like a pile of shit. And therefore, you know, the layers ended up being a little bit louder, but it still remains the old character. If you got one of my packs, like the Ultimate Rostyle Kick Volume 1 or Volume 2, or the now the new one, Ultimate Hardcore Kick Volume 1, you find the clean kicks, you find the talks, the tails, that hopefully will make it a little bit easier for you to enhance your sound to a point where it's competitive where it can hold up against the big guys. I see a lot of guys that really can hold up against the big guys in terms of creativity, but most of them suck at producing and unfortunately in the first place at kick drums. If you make your kick and it sucks at the talk, just toss a talk sample and you're good to go. Like I said in the beginning, this was more a tutorial for the beginners. I guess the pro guys or the guys who are really anal about their kicks, they don't really care about that stuff, but especially for you guys who are watching who are really beginners. In the beginning, don't forget to make music. Don't fucking kill yourself over kicks. I've seen so many guys starting, doing a year long only kicks and stopping making music entirely, completely fucking depressed. It's not good. It's not helpful, nothing. You will lose the fun if you just over obsess with kicks. It's definitely not gonna hurt if you learn it at some point and definitely not gonna hurt if you put a lot of time into it. But don't over obsess with that. Use the tools available. Like I said, a lot of pros doing that already. So don't think you are cheating or you're a piece of shit or something like that. You're not. I hope that was kind of helpful. You know, I thought at some point I'm gonna do something for the beginners. Because, yeah, I remember the live streams been like very sophisticated. And yeah, just, just gonna do some more easy stuff. So if you got any questions, suggestions, comments, if you want to see more of that kind of easy going shit just you know how to really utilize samples and stuff because uh, there is a lot to take away from those packs like i said i had a couple of videos where i showed a little bit on how to use those packs but there's so much more that you can do so much more instead of breaking your balls and trying to learn all that shit anyway guys thanks for tuning in don't forget to like and subscribe and do all that shit and Make sure you check out my other videos. I got a lot of cool shit, so definitely make sure. And uh, also make sure you check out the Hard Dance Producer Network podcast. I'm getting some really interesting guys, professionals from all walks of life, talking to me about production, about life, about the business. So you can definitely learn a lot of shit from the guys who have done it before. So thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.